Good morning, everybody. Hello, welcome along. Yeah, I've got a squeeze. Yeah, so it's just I'll give you a squeeze of ultramarine then. Um, let's get some music. Hello, Sarah. How are you doing? Recovering slowly, I hope. Oh well, recovering quickly. I don't. I don't want you to recover slowly. That sounds a bit like I'm happy you hurt yourself. I am not. I think you should be able to see my. Yeah, you can see my. Um, morning. It's John. I'm just going to go and say hello to a customer downstairs. He's just shouted up to say hello, so I ought to go and say hello back because he's, he's a nice man. Years ago, when my, when my poor old daughter Libby, I used to live by close to Zola, where Zola lived, and um, loads of dresses were made with people's wear. And I really couldn't find the work, and I stopped doing all that sort of thing. Right. Day, Bless him. Two years ago, she was in That's Bar, good news. And she got this book, Focus, Focusing the Book, and it was all pretty little monsters, and she wanted them to throw them, and they were all supposed to be. Well, you know, at least you can... Cr I can't. Jackie's tried to teach me to crochet and knit, and I can't do anything. Yeah. I get... I don't know what I'm doing. My elbows are up like this, and, I, and I, I'm and i very tense. And if you think Jackie's a tight crocheter, mine are... Uh, they're like... <laughs> like knots. I just... And I, and I can't get my hook in, and then I get annoyed, and then I've got a sweat on, and then I throw it across the room... So I don't do crochet. I will not be teaching crochet classes anytime soon because I can't. But I'm glad you're doing better, Sarah. I've done him portrait. I've done him landscape, but you can do him portrait because it's a square image. It doesn't really matter. The um, I did an owl on Monday morning in Wardington. That's in Gouache. Same paper I'm using today. Um, um, the the grey uh, paint on Claire Fontaine. Green. Green. So, um, not very many colours either today. Black, white, ultramarine, lemon, yellow, crimson. And the ultramarine, lemon, yellow is for the grass, and the crimson's for the heather. And clearly, the badge is black and white. Although, actually, he's a little bit dirty. They're not pure white. They're more of a, a beigey colour at times. I follow a lot of badgers on um, social media. People that um, have badgers visit their house. There's a, a lady up, up up near Cheshire, um, and she, her garden backs onto a woodland, oh, yeah. and she's got massive double, almost full length patio doors in her living room, and she puts food out. She's got foxes, all animals that visit, but she's had a family of badgers visit for the last seven years, <laughs> and the generation of them, yeah. after generation, come and they, you know, every evening they make a stop off, and. Um, that she she's even got some of them eating out of her hand at times, but they're yeah. you know they're the ones that have been coming for all of that time that have, they trust her. Mr. Lumpy and friends, they're called on them. We've so. got an ornament for the badger, and that's by the way, and it says no mm. squirrels and hedgehogs. But he's got his he's got his um, squirrels that jump from the trees down the bottom of the garden. He's he's there. Oh. See, I don't get any animals, any birds, because I haven't really got a garden, so um, it's uh, there's not really much. 
not much for an animal to come through. So, oh, you know Mr. Lumpy too, Sarah. Mr. Lumpy. Oh. I'll give you five, ten more, more minutes to to sketch out. See, I can I can see your comments, which is good, but I can't see what um what what you can see on the screen that's quite frustrating facebook is a bit naughty at times and things that are on one screen one week aren't necessarily there the following week i don't tend to i as i say every week i don't m staple my gouache down I'm, I'm a bit more flexible with how it works um whereas with acrylics and watercolor i will staple it down uh, pastels i don't do that with either weirdly i like i like the freedom to move my paper around i don't need to do that necessarily with watercolor or um uh, with sorry with gouache or uh, pastels i i i Gouache and pastels, I need the freedom. Acrylics and watercolour, I don't mind it being exactly where it is. I think it's because I generally do more animals in gouache, so I I need to twist it round to do the fur and stuff. So I, I haven't done the full badger there because there'll be some stuff in front. I, I don't know why I chose grey today. I, I could have chosen any colour for this, really, couldn't I? I think black paper would have been a bit too harsh. As a background yeah. Yeah. um green i think would be too wrong for everything else because i i want it so we can do we're going to create a sort of a vignette where the the green is fading away so we yeah. uh, you know i think a bit like i did with the owl here i've got a lighter patch and a darker patch yeah. so it just sort of spreads out and moves around a little bit so i think um I think well, we're already there. the majority of the badger's back is sort of flecky grey, isn't it? So yeah. I think we can. Um, yeah, so it won't matter if we miss a bit. Will no, it? Like exactly. <laughs> and and with the f the white fur not being fully white, yeah. we can do a bit with that as well. So that's good. I can't see. Can you see how many people are watching live? I've, it's it's totally taken off my video screen. It's bizarre. It's, it's a Tuesday today. I know it's Wednesday, but it's Tuesday because it's the second day of the second month in 22. Oh, what? Two, 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 two. Yeah. So it's Tuesday, even though it's a Wednesday. Two, 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 two. When's pancake day? Well, I thought that's usually soon, isn't it? Let me have a look. Grove Tuesday. We've got Valentine's Day next, which is in two weeks. Oh, Shrove Tuesday is the 1st of March. Pancake Day, 1st of March. Mm. Shrove yeah. Tuesday, yeah. yeah. And it's also St. David's Day. Yeah, because um, Easter's later, isn't it? This year. April, isn't it? That's why it's called Pancake. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Good Friday is the 15th of April, yeah. So it is much later this year. So we've only got Valentine's Day in February. Hmm. What date is that? That will be, I think, it's a Monday, Valentine's oh, Day. Monday, yeah. the, Monday the 14th. Yeah, that's the only thing that's going on this this um this month. Do your children break up before the middle thing, like the first of break up on the fourteenth? That's the no, it's the week after. That's the week after. Is it because all the holidays, Easter's so late, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. Right, a couple more minutes, and then we'll do some painting. I might do his eyes first, but they're tiny. They're tiny little eyes for such a big animal. Tiny little eyes to make sure I've got me um, 
that's my brush that's my brush that's my watercolor brush not that it matters but I like I like um like my brushes to be used for the right things I've got to clean my acrylic brushes um it was it was quite a tricky class we did yesterday afternoon it was very full on um it wasn't hard as in in the acrylic class it wasn't hard as in the techniques were hard but there were just lots of things in we'd got bridges we'd got trees we'd got rocks we'd got water yeah. um if i was doing it for myself i'd have done it on a black background and it would have taken it would have saved so much time because we had to paint it black underneath anyway mm. but doing it in separate separated parts mm -hmm then letting it dry and then doing that and then doing the ne the same thing but somewhere else it just takes a lot of time but i know i have i have students that struggle to see when it's painted black they struggle to see how it's going to be different yeah so i tried to I remember when we did the bluebell wood yes we did it with a black yeah piece of paper yeah yeah but it did because we had the long shadows was it like a, the sunlight through the middle wasn't it yes. yeah Wow. Another one. What's that? You've done. Of painting, you've gone for 100 page book. Yeah. Well, that's good. <laughs> I'm just going to use a little thin brush and a little black just to do his actual eye shape. And they're so tiny. Little piggy eyes. I love badgers. Not the American badger. The American badger looks like it's going to challenge you to a fight whereas the British badger makes you look like it's going to invite you in for a cup of tea <laughs> a lot friendlier I'm going to do his nostrils as well while I'm at it because they are too dark holes because the, the, the area around their eyes isn't fully black it's more of a, a, a browny gray and we can I haven't got brown on my list today because I thought we could make a bit of brown because we're not going to be using loads of it at all <coughs> I will put the white highlights there aren't really any but I will put some in on his eyes um, when they're dry because it will only absorb Because the nose is also that sort of browny colour, so we'll. I'm just. I've just outlined his eyelids. Customer. I've done his nostrils, his his eyes, and his eyelids. Just, well, just the outline of his eyelids. I haven't coloured them in in because we're going to do. Um, I want to make a, a a dark brown colour, and I'll show you how we can make a brown. Well, there's there's lots of ways we can make a brown. Um, I'm going to make an orange colour from the crimson and the lemon. Now that will make me a burnt orange, a deep orange. So if I then add a little bit of ultramarine to that orange, I'll get brown. Want a bit more red in there, a ready orange. With a bit of ultramarine will give us a nice brown, but then I'm gonna add a pinhead of black to it. Perfect. A bit more red, that's what I want, there we go. And that's what I'm going to use as a base. Would you put a little bit of black? A tiny bit of black. So basically, I'm just doing the eyelids. I'll probably have to redo them again afterwards, to be honest. Around his eyes. Mine's a bit green. So add more red. Yeah. If it's gone a bit green. We're going to darken this up, but we, it's good to have a base colour in. Now it's brown, is that right? Yeah, we're after a brown okay. that we can fade around his eyes. I'll probably have to put more black on. What I find with um, 
black and white gouache when you want a solid area of it you tend to have to put in two or three layers because it it gives us um it soaks in you know so you, you want to build it up slowly so i've just given him some really dodgy eyeshadow um like that Let me blacken his eye a little bit more, his actual coloured part of his eye. Because he's got black, his black stripes are there, but... It will show up more once the, um... Once the stripes are on. <coughs> it's funny, with the owl yesterday, no, Monday, I did DI last because it was just a big black circle with a white dot in it. Mm. But with this, the fur is actually growing around the eye, so I think it's important to um, to put them in first. And I'll, we'll do a bluey grey for the nose as well. I mean, they snuffle in dirt all the time, so... Um, they they? And their claws, they look really lethal, but obviously they need to dig through... They live underground, so they've got to dig it somehow. They don't come born with a shovel. <laughs> I think they're such beautiful creatures. I've, I've, I'm so lucky... It's got to be seven years ago I was going for a walk near where I live and it was early evening the sun hadn't quite set and um, I heard a rustle um, closer to me than you are and I looked through the undergrowth and there was a young badger just snuffing along and he saw me I just froze and I thought I've never been that close to something so beautiful that I've been obsessed with since yeah. I was tiny I managed to take a couple of photos of him um, and it it, away, not initially no it wasn't until i tried to get closer because i was getting greedy yeah. and i wanted to be so close to him um that he uh he upped and left but i oh that was magical that was <laughs> magical right i'm gonna go with a bit of black a little bit of blue the black's quite strong so um and then a little bit of white so it's a, a slate gray we'll go with a blue gray a bluey gray color mm -hmm. a bit of blue. yeah you need more blue than black oh. i know i i realized that as soon as um i started mixing it just how how strong the black was and then white tiny weeny bit of white because we want this for his nose and then we'll go a little bit darker down here and we'll add the highlights it's later grey, yeah it's a bluey grey and a little bit more black on the lower part of his nose as well but it's very textured and mottly so we can add lots yeah so the brown still shows through in places and i might do that a little bit in 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 sort of patchy bits around his eyes so it's not so brown this is the only fiddly bit really i guess because the rest of it we can work with But it's nice that we can add lighter parts and darker parts as and when we do it. Whereas with watercolours, we'd have to be adding the black last, which would be difficult at times, isn't it? Yeah. To try and work backwards. 
I'm going to add a little bit of white on his nose, a bit quite runny white, because um, the light's coming from the left, isn't it? So I know that this will absorb in, hopefully. A little. So I'm doing little dots. Do the same with his eyelids where it meets the. Um, I'm not putting the light on his eye yet because that's got to be really um, really dry. So I'm just doing lots of little dots and I will almost certainly have to um, add a bit more if I want more highlight. But it's just quite nice I like working in gouache it's just, I think it's one of my favorite things especially for something small as I said before I think anything bigger than a4 where there's a huge amount of work to go I think that's it yeah I think it would be too fiddly unless I've got hours and hours and hours yeah. to spare it would be quite nice to build up the layer but how many times have I actually got that much time spare? I'm trying to make a light grey again with a bit more white just so I can put a little bit more definition around his eyes. It will tone down Because they're so dark badgers and they've got much bigger nostrils than I've drawn in so I'm going to have to find his nose again. There we go. That's better. He's got nostrils again now. Mm. I'd lost his nostrils. <laughs> Tiny little light spots in his eye. Which you could do with a gel pen afterwards actually. I, I'd say play it by ear. Just a tiny pinprick of white, but what I'd say is see how you go because sometimes the white can totally just disappear. That's done all right already. Yeah, that's funny, isn't it? Because normally when you're doing a portrait or something like that, you do the eyes and everything last, and yes, everything goes, yeah, and it looks blank, doesn't it? And then suddenly when you've done it, it comes to life, yeah. Well, it's, uh, sometimes I will do the eyes first and then it gives me the encouragement to carry on. Because yeah. there's nothing worse than spending hours on something and then doing the eyes and then it looking it's, yeah, awful. It doesn't look, right. Doesn't look yeah. right. So I'll spend a bit longer on the eye and then... Even though these are so tiny, these eyes, but I think because they're so tiny, they need more work on them because yeah. otherwise it wouldn't look right, would it? Unusually, actually, the owl in gouache I did on Monday, um, Monday morning, we don't normally upload those onto our download website, yeah. but <laughs> the group was very quiet normally because there's like 15 people or whatever. They're very chatty. Um, so it picks up on the microphone and you can't always hear. But they were absorbed watching me paint that owl. So I've been able to download it so I can sell it as a recorded lesson. Yeah. It's very rare on a Monday morning. Sarah, you can vouch for that, um, that uh, they enjoy a bit of a, a catch up over the weekend. And sometimes it spills over to when I'm doing my demo. Bless them. I'm just trying to highlight a bit of his nostril as well. It will sink in. I think that'll do. Right. I want to do, uh, this is going to be a little bit fiddly. We're a noisy bunch, she says. You are a noisy bunch. Um, I'm going to add, I've pulled out some white. I'm going to add a teensy weensy bit of yellow and a tiny little bit of red. So it goes a more of a, a cream colour. And I'm going to use a thin brush and paint the hair 
Now, you don't have to paint every individual hair. If you've got a brush that's a bit um, scratchy and old, you could just put one brush down and uh, put it on that way. So it's kind of a, 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 you want a bit more yellow then. You want it like a, a biscuity cream colour, but very, very pale. Probably more yellow than red. I think I've got, yeah, if it goes too pink, you've got too much red. Oh, I'm using a number, I'm using a zero, Sarah. A zero round. Um but part of me is thinking where's that scratchy brush that will work really well for fur they're all quite scratchy now my acrylic brushes particularly um, this is only the the darker layer so I'm leaving the um, the grey show through and I'm just doing lots of little short strokes I'll probably regret this this is a really thin detailed brush but if if I could find my brush That's number one, is that all right? yeah number one's fine I've got somewhere a brush that's quite scratchy and old and I think if I put if I use that it would work really really well for this because you want to fill in large areas it, it depends how fast you want to go um, I'm confined by time here really because I won't be able to finish this so I've, I've got a pet portrait that I've really got to finish because the photographs I was sent weren't well, it was lovely photographs, but they were because the dog is no longer with us, so it's not like I can get new photos of him. Um, but it was in very strong evening sunlight, uh, which changed all of the colours. So I painted it towards the colours that I could see, uh, but I've since been given a different photograph, and it's like a totally different dog because the colours are all different. Um, <coughs> so I've got to build up on the one that I've already got what's that it's a girl dog so um, it's difficult when um, when you're confined by just you see that this is this the third animal the third the third dog portrait I've done for this couple um, and the other two I've actually met but obviously I can't meet a dog that doesn't exist in the real in the real life realm anymore so um, I'm I'm totally at the mercy of the photographs and how that prints out and looks and they're not digital so they're the old five by sevens I might use some of this for the um, So this isn't the whitest we got. We are going to go whiter than this. But it's all about building up. I, I have to say, with that owl, I spent another half an hour on it than my 45-minute demo um, allowed. So I could finish it off. Because I wanted it. I do like working in gouache, so... I wanted to make sure it was a reasonable finish because I might uh, pop that in a frame alongside this badger if this badger works out well. If well, it might. It, I did say if because it might look like a badger, but I might not be. It might not be saleable. You know, it might just be, because it looks like a badger already, look, it's a badger. But is it to my normal animal standards? I'm not really into animals normally, am I? No! <laughs> but I think it's quite nice to, 
I think you might like animals better in gouache, you know, because you can build up the layers in a different way. Yeah. And it's quite therapeutic. Because you're... Um, I get lost in it. I really do when I'm working in gouache. I'm not a detailed person normally, and I'm not a fiddly person. But I do find working in gouache is sort of a really, really total change of uh, style and technique for me. I can see my uh, my drawing coming through, which is a little bit annoying. I'll have to see if I can rub that off. It would, yeah, that's true. I'm just trying to rub off my lines because they're really visible, but I think I've sealed them now. I'm not going to do too much around the edge because we're going to put a bit of green on, aren't we? So we'll end up having to put, when we do the whiter fur, that's where we'll add greens. And then we'll add the white. Because I don't want to waste our time. So I just want to fill in sections. It does look a lot whiter on the screen that you're looking at than um, it is on mine. Yeah, it's a yellowish colour. Yeah. And I've just remembered this is my this is my fur brush. Look, it's it's a really scratty flat brush. But what happens is I don't want to wet it too much. If I go in and I'll do I'll do the this colour fur for his back and I want it quite pale. So in a similar way to the way we'd work in acrylics or something. I can do quite coarse scratchy fur mm. but it needs to be wetter than that but I don't know if this is the right one I think this is the right brush that I use yeah because you can see it works in lots of areas if it's too wet it won't do anything um, but see how I can quickly Give me a nice scratchy yeah. bit of white fur. I'll probably put some darks on there. So the older the brush, I, I am so bad, I don't like throwing brushes away. <laughs> well, I've got problem underneath the sink. And, well, they come in handy. They, you know, <laughs> they'll do something. Well, John says, he's got, he's got paint brush up his sleeve. Yeah, get under the sink. Yeah, well, this is it. Sometimes you need a smaller brush for fiddling and faffing with certain stuff, and don't you? Know, yeah, it's a little bit more dilute, so I've not got as much um, strength of colour. It shows up a lot more on the camera. Oh. See, by using the scratchy brush, I can build it up. And it just means I can work a little bit quicker. Because sometimes when people commission me to a pet portrait, they want it within two weeks. Which, which if, if I'm teaching, I'll be teaching 14 classes during those two weeks, as well as running a shop. Yeah. So... I don't always have the luxury of time. So if I can cover larger areas in in very basic fur detail, that means I can be a little bit quicker. I mean, if I was doing this by individual fur strands, like we did the face, it would take me forever and a day. Yeah. But at least this way, I will do the same with some black fur because it needs to do but we'll leave that for now to 
we're an hour, we're an hour in. No, we're not. We're half an hour in. I nearly did a Yumari and, and <laughs> think we started at ten, but we didn't. No, I got up this morning and I thought, right, it's half past ten. <laughs> Brush killing, absolutely. We do want to do. It is a brush killer. Um, I've got one that I use for acrylics. Where was it? This one I used yesterday in acrylics. Look at look at the state of that. But it was brilliant for stippling leaves and moss and grass. Yeah. Because it's yeah. you're just working on a few points. I love old brushes. I think they give you more different things sometimes when i get a new brush i keep thinking right i can't wait for this to go <laughs> old. old and abused because i can do some really great things with it i'm i'm tempted to do a bit of the green behinds next before we do too much stuff yeah and then we can really work on now with the owl that i did on monday the really white highlights I actually used a gel pen on after it was dry for the you know the real fine edges because yeah. it sometimes is a bit more opaque than me using white gouache for because um, you're still diluting it aren't you yeah. um, and each time you dilute a paint obviously you, you're diluting the strength of pigment So yeah, when I did my December exhibition, because all the paintings were <laughs> quite big, mm -hmm. I used acrylics. But when I'm doing smaller things, I will use um, gouache. Depends how much detail I want to put in it. Even in acrylics, if, if it's something that I want really detailed, I'll probably use gouache with, yeah. because instead of, because I can really layer it up and... Yeah get a bit more texture especially for stuff like fur and, and, and things like that it makes a big yeah, difference it's quite difficult to do fur isn't it it is I mean working in watercolours we couldn't do it this way because obviously we'd be on white paper to start with yeah. then we'd have to do a light grey and then we'd have to do a creamy wash like this but then we'd have to put a dark in then darker yeah. and get keep getting darker and try not to lose the white yeah. but in gouache if we lose the white we can put the white back in again. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So it's it's building up in a different way, I think, that works quite well. So I'm going to abandon the fur for a minute because we've got a good base colour in. Oh, or should we do a bit of darker fur for his, um, under his chin first? No, we'll do the background next. I'm going to go, I'm still going to use a small brush though to mix a, uh, Grayish, no, greeny colour because we've got the dark underneath, haven't we? Yeah. So if I go with, I'm going to pull this further down here so I've got my own little spot. That's quite a lot of yellow there. This is lemon yellow. It looks a bit orange on the screen, but it, it isn't. And ultramarine. And that gives me a mushy pea green. Um, and I'm just going to pop it on here. I might need another brush to help me fade it out. Let me go with a bit more blue. I need more blue to this. But the grey card will show through. So this is why I didn't want to do too much fur until the background was on. Because yeah. otherwise it's just going to... I'm going to have to do it again anyway. So I'm using the brush quite wet as I've, I've done an outline around the back of the badger, a little short flat one. And I'm doing a bit of a, a runny paint dance, a quick jab around because I want it to be there, but I want it to disappear. So I guess, well, we are creating a vignette where we're fading it around the edge. I did exactly the same with the owl. You don't want to use too much um, water with this, only because we, I'm working on card. And um, by working on card, it means if I add too much, I'll end up going through 
the paper. So if you start to see little bits of balls appearing, little dark balls, that's actually the fibre of your paper. And uh, that's your cue to let it dry. And come back when it's dry to do the same thing. So it doesn't mean you've ruined your work. You've only ruined your work when you've gone right the way through and you're colouring in your table. So there's Heather going to be down here, so that's fine. Actually, yeah, I I kind of like the way this is coming on. I'll go with a bit more ultramarine next. Slightly darker greens. And I, I, I will do actual grass bits in this, you know, but I want to just give us that merged, soft line of tone. Customer yeah, customer. What sort of things does she like? Does she like chocolates and... She does. Things? She's not a massive drinker. No. Um... She likes chocolate. She look yeah. She does like chocolate. Um, she's partial to like the, you know, a a gin of a tin of gin and tonic, but like the flavored ones, oh, yeah. that the little one pound tin things of gin and whatever, or or um, like the passion fruit martini in a tin kind of stuff like that but she's not a big drinker she's she's more of a social drinker yeah. but yeah biscuits or um chocolate right i'm not going to do any more background as this sort of colour. I'm going to get the hairdryer on it so you can see how it lightens and changes. Because it will go chalkier. I've kind of gone as thin as I can get that paper there. And I can see some of the fibre of the paper poking through. So that's why I'm drying it to stop me from going right the way through. That's better. You can see I've got quite a bit of moisture on there. Um, interestingly, um, what the, the paper's curled a little bit. That's okay. And I might put on a few um, quite dark green blades of grass. So blue and yellow. Might throw in a little bit of that brown that we made for his nose. Oh, that's a nice colour. Because the heather's the detailed bit, isn't it? Really. The heather in front that we haven't done yet. That's yeah. that's more detailed because this is all out of focus. Yeah, it's just to give the illusion. There are some paler grasses in there as well, which are similar to his hair colour. It's that straw orange tone, isn't it? I could put some of those in. But again, I don't want to do too much in the background because we don't want to detract from what's going on here. But I can put a few, because I know it's going to... Um, soften and change so if I do a few pale biscuity colour bits of grass and just to set the scene I won't be using a gel pen or anything for the background it's fun sometimes to see it sink in and just tint the colour a little because I am using quite a bit of water. I think that'll do, 
Although I think now I need some darker blue. Could add a bit of black if I want it darker. Oh yeah, that works as well. It's getting enough paint and water ratio, isn't it? We were saying this in the acrylic class yesterday, how that's always going to be a tricky thing to navigate in the art world is how much and it works no matter oh, that's too much black no matter how what paint you're working in whether it's watercolors or um, acrylics or gouache the amount of water you use um, and the amount of paint that you've got will make a big difference and, and sometimes that's really hard to get your head round. Yeah, exactly. You've got to then try and... No. I think that'll do with that little bit of a background. I will have to flick some of this green back in because I was a bit stingy around his fur. <coughs> um, two this morning, but then other people do it at some point later on um, and then uh, this afternoon the drawing class is full in real life it's the only class that we ever get filled um, currently in the classroom. yeah I think I've got one calligraphy class that we've got a couple of people coming on soon yeah. um, and one Sunday class normally I only have like one or two in every lesson so I'm hopeful that as the warmer weather comes that people are going to start coming out of their house more and because yeah. I don't think we're ever going to fully have what we used to have before I don't think we've, we will never see the back of Covid in the same sense yeah So we don't want to do too much with that background. We just, again, set the scene, keep it soft. And then I 
think about a dark grey for his back. So do you think you might like animals in gouache? Yeah, but I, I'm, I'm not keen on the background at the moment. No. I like the animals. I think, I think that the, the, the thing with the background is as well that we haven't got the really dark bits on of no. the animals. So when the black goes on eventually, yeah, it will that it, it should, it, yeah. it, will, it will change how the background looks. Yeah. But if I make, I'm going to use my fur brush, my old scratchy brush. So I want some black. And a little bit of white so I don't this is this is for his back so I want a dark gray I might add a bit of blue in there as well black and white tiny bit of blue and I'm just gonna pop in a few now it's difficult with gouache that, that I, I think if you're coming at gouache from a watercolour background, it's tricky because it dries darker, doesn't it? It goes more matte, just like painting the emulsion on a wall. So if I use this darker one and leave some of those lighter tones, I might put some more light tones in on top, but... The more layers we can add, the better it's going to look. And I'm going to use this underneath his chin as well, where the black is going to go. Maybe even his stripes. But you can see how this is a much faster way of working. So any any flat brush that's not perfect will work well, or a a hog bristle brush. Even a fan brush, something like that, will give you this option. And again, we're going to go darker. We're going to change it all. I might use this in his um, for his stripes. Bit. So it's looking a bit like a badger now, isn't it? Mm. So it's a cup of tea time. It does look a bit like a badger. Does look a lot, yes. So I'll, I'll, while you're all carrying on and doing other bits, I will get our drinks and then um, we can so crack on. I've, I've done anything that's going to be black I've done in this colour because then it just gives a bit more layering, doesn't it? Yeah, okay. Decaf cappuccino.
12 people downstairs in the queue ahead, so Jackie's going to place your order. I think there are people doing a course somewhere and they've all just come in for a drink, so. <coughs> it's good, so, well, the cafe's busy, but she's just on her own, so it's sort of a, a busy thing. Okay. Yeah, but Kathy knows anyway, doesn't she? Well, whether she'll remember or not, <laughs> she will. Hopefully, she will. Well, they're given. Um, I booked in for tomorrow. Oh yeah. Right, and then I booked in before my dates have come through. Oh, good. Okay. And I've got to take Lola to. Uh, well, she's in the hospital as well. Yeah. Um, so I won't be back for watercolour class until the 24th of February. Okay. And the Jewish, Jewish will also won't be back until the 2nd of March. Okay. But it's all booked in anyway. Oh, that's good. Well, that's good though that you, you get in sorted. Yeah. The 2nd of March then when I come in. Yeah. Yes. So. Well, if not, you just let us know. Yeah, we'll play it by ear. That'll be nice. That's I'm just. Oh. It, it is. But good that you'll be sorted. You'll be bionic. Yes. Yeah, at least that's done. Then all I've got to wait for is the pin for needles. Yeah. This is just black I'm putting in here with my monkey brush. I've got a week in between, but the thing is I've got money. So. Well, you can't do everything and you can't be everywhere, can you? So. I'll probably do the front and his stripes with the black like this, but the little flecks on his back I will use a thin brush for. Because the white fur of his chin needs to stick out in front of this black, doesn't it? So. all part of the layering and I really want to make sure the heather works I'm going to have to switch now to a thin brush and do fiddly bits which is perfect do the same with the white fur over the black stripes when that's time comes So you do need to use a mix. I, I think if you were only using a, a nice cheaty, scratchy brush for everything, I think it wouldn't look finished or detailed enough. If you're doing a really big 
piece, I suppose that would be all right. But because this is quite a small animal, Okay, Sarah, thank you. I look forward to um, seeing what you can do and what you've created. Because the black fur in his back are very, very sparse furs. Um, so I think I will do it with... With the thin brush still. But I do, I do enjoy. Um, have you done gouache before, Roger? I know you're you're on today. Have you done much in the way of gouache? I I just love it because of how flexible it is in terms of what you can do with it and how you can build up layering. I mean, of course, if you were working in watercolours, you could still incorporate gouache into it that way. Um, but if you're more of a sort of watercolour purist, you'll want to keep watercolours for watercolours and acrylics for acrylics and all that jazz. So slowly we start to see a badger's proper face come through. Has that dark made a difference to your background greens now? You've put the black on, Marie. If yeah. you Are you a bit happier with them now? Yeah. It's knowing that they dry chalkier, isn't it, that I think yeah. is, is yeah. more yeah. difficult to get your head round. Because it's not necessarily the colour that you mixed or that the colour you put on. And then you just stuck with whatever you've got there.
probably the only duration of stream. Some quite long, wiry hairs on his chest as well, aren't they? Yeah. Much longer than you think. Well, I think he's looking okay. Now, I know I've got... We're putting Heather in front of this, aren't we? But I think I'll extend some of him, of his black fur down. To allow for the Heather to come in front. I think it's, with with gouache, you tend to see faster effects. Do you know what I mean? Mm. You, you, you get the results quicker, quicker. Yeah. because you're um, I'm using a bit of grey to give him a bit more definition around his cheeks. Um, you get, because you're putting on lights and darks, you don't have that surprise at the end like you do with watercolour. Mm. Um, it's far more subtle. Um so I suppose in that sense it's a bit more like acrylics, isn't it? That you can you can play about with it more. Maybe a bit of brown in there. Are you in tomorrow? Um yes, I think so. I've not heard not, so I presume yes. I'm adding a bit of brown in his cheeks because I've still got some mixed up that we made for his nose. And then I'll be putting more white in and, you know, all of that. As we progress. Well, I hope you'll get a drink before you, before we close. But she sounds extremely rammed downstairs. So. Let's get in there. I think there's far more white fur that I need to add, and then once the um, although I don't want pure white, so I think I've got a bit of a dirty brush here. Let's see if that will work. Well, you want it brighter than anything else that you've put on. Yeah. But I don't know if I'll be using um, a gel pen to get through any more of it. But we'll see how we get on.
because obviously to do white fur you need the lines to be thin mm. but you want them to be opaque as well which is I think really tricky And it's funny how the white in his eyes that I we put in, for mine they've not gone, they've gone grey. They're not white anymore. Are they? Well, that's not a bad thing. I'm gonna have to gel pen, I think, as we get on. It is. There's a lot. There's a lot to it. There is a lot to it. Because it's constantly building up, isn't it, all the time. Yeah. The more layers you do, the better it will look. But even though it's something that's quite far away, mm. um, you still need to make it look like it's fair, don't you? Yeah. Um, I paint on the back, but I have done a few <laughs> where I've just hated it. I think, it. no, I think there's certain things that I won't, uh, because I've been painting for such a long time, mm. even rubbish ones look okay. Yeah. But I, I, they're the ones that, if they look okay, but I'm not pleased with it, they're the ones I have to pretend are exactly what I meant it to look like, you know. Mm. Even though secretly I'm thinking, no, that's not right, that's not right. But I do... The, the scariest ones for me are when I get pet portraits. Mm. Because I sometimes I've never met the animal. So I've no idea what it looks like, really, other than the photograph. Yeah. And they might send me a few different photographs. But I don't really get much in the way of the personality or... Um, the real colouring which will change you know with certain spaniel brown spaniels sometimes they look yellow yeah. where the sun hits them because of the way the copper reflects um, whereas other times they can look like a brown grey so it's yeah. so hard to get to know exactly what the colours are supposed to be on things um, and, and, you, and generally you're working with people who want the portrait but they're not particularly arty so they don't know about colours mm. um, you know they might be able to go oh well it was a bit lighter than that or you know he was a bit darker or he was a bit more blue yeah. or not blue enough because that's the other issue with black furred animals some of them can look very blue under certain lights um, and there are some that are known as blue so I, I do find it, it can be stressful at times because I won't know I've got it right until I've done it or not. And I might be pleased with it because it looks like an animal, but it, it you know, it may not look like their animal. So it is the most, it's, it's the most stressful thing I've ever done because you just don't know. Um, with this portrait that I'm working on at the moment, this pet portrait, I knew it wasn't right. Um, but I also knew that the owners would probably be just accept it because they've already had two and they wouldn't want to, uh, you know, offend me. So 
I actually sent Jackie down with it because I know then you've got a person that's removed from the situation that they'll probably go, oh, well, it's a bit wrong in this place or the cheek's not right or, you know. Yeah. <clears throat> and that's what they did because I wanted, you know, if they're going to pay for a pet portrait, it's got to look like what they want. Well, that's good, isn't it, that they actually said. Yeah. And they were like, oh, we don't want to upset him. We don't want to... And it's like, well, you know. Because there are some times I just know I haven't got it right, but I can't work out why, because it looks exactly like the photograph, but it's the other little parts and the elements or certain colourings I haven't got quite right. That's because I can't see it from the photograph. Like with the one I'm doing now, there's a, a, white, a, a white pale streak ap across the centre of the head but it's only available on one of the photographs I've been sent and it looks like the light is catching it so I wouldn't know whether it was the light or whether it was a marking. So it is really, really quite... Still got to finish. Yeah, I've got to finish it now. Um, but I'm quite limited in, in, in terms of time as to when I can do it. But I will, of course. I've made my badger a bit fluffy. He's a fluffy badger. <laughs> oh, he's got whiskers as well. Oh, should I do the pen? Whiskers in pen? No, I'm going to have to do them in paint because I don't want them to stand out. I need to put, I've just spotted, there's a bit of black I haven't put in up here that is quite long.
dry. So I'm gonna have to nip to the gents and hopefully it sounded a little bit quieter, so a bit more hopeful that you might get something. <laughs> It's all right, I don't mind doing it. I'm stretching legs. That was a mad 20 minutes. Well, it was. It's all thatchers. Yeah. Oh, oh. Sweet and gorgeous. <laughs> Thank you, Cathy. Oh I said to Jackie, just pounce when she's gone yeah, quiet. Yeah, she did. It did I, go quiet. Now, do you know, Jackie's got a customer. I said, I said, so. don't, I said don't do it now because be, <laughs> she's going to be stressed enough with oh, all those people. I want to buy that one. Oh, okay. <laughs> I want you to keep it myself, but okay. Um, Kathy's daughter is obsessed with badgers. Oh, is she? Yeah, she's um, she's uh, part of the local badger group and all of that oh. kind of stuff. And she helps on the nutking ward, you know, where they rescue wild animals and and all of that. So she's um, she's part of the team for that. Right. I don't know if I want to do any more to that badger. I could see if a gel pen will make much difference to the whiter. Because it will be a lot whiter though than the colour that I'm putting on. doing the heather which is going to be a little bit tricky but we'll see what we can do you've got your drink now so I'll quickly put the kettle on for me well I didn't order me one because I thought it'd be a bit rude because yeah. she's so busy yeah. and I don't pay so <laughs> um, I'll make my own instead but then I wait to see Another one for us, yeah, well, I might. I'll, she can have this one. I can. Um, I don't need a lot of paint. I don't need paintings. I mean, I've got two flipping many anyway around here. Um, I, I did do a big badger on a wooden panel a couple of years ago, and I've kept that. So I have actually got one. I don't need. Why would I need more? To be honest.
Right. I think he's look. I think he's looking all right. What do you think, Jackie? He looks okay. Do you know? I think I might need a few more brown bits in his fur. I've got me a good scoop. <laughs> I might use some of that brown. White, wasn't it? Yeah, just white. Just white. A bit of brown in his black fur as well, I can see. So he's we'll need to make some more brown later on and. Well, we've only got 25 minutes left, so in the next 25 minutes we'll be making some more brown. Um, so we can um, do the twiggy bits of the heather, because there's green bits and twiggy bits, isn't there? So let's put that aside. Kathy came in, she wants to buy this now, Jackie. My bad, Joe. Oh. I'd well, planned on... Ah. Well, I wanted to keep it myself. I can't now. I need the money anyway. <laughs> I'd sell the one I've got that I've done yeah. um, at home if I if um, if I was going to get some money for it. But it's 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 weird because I've only just started keeping some paintings that I've done. Um, I've got two paintings of my gnomes in the snow that I just loved. Mm. Um, I've got, years and years ago, I did two panoramic mountain scenes, like really long, thin ones, um, about six years ago. I've kept those. They were for sale originally, but I really like them, and they're of Wales, of the places that I go, so I like that, so I've kept that one. And um, I've got another one that I taught as a class on a Thursday evening, and it was... Um, a copper jug with a lemon and I did it in watercolour and I just absolutely it looked like a photograph even though it was a, a lesson piece and I fell in love with it and I've, I've got that in my dining room and I don't normally like still life um, but I just yeah banana yeah It's quite fun. I did a banana in gouache um, as a demo uh, in, uh, about six months ago, and I, somebody bought it because they really like the banana. <laughs> mm. Did you want a tea, or you've just had a coffee, haven't you? No, no. This is the tea that I never had at half past eleven, so I just made it. I waited for Marie to get hers. You see, I didn't want. To, I did. I didn't want to be rude. There was a big rush. But we're all sorted now. And we've got 20 minutes to go. Right. I'm down my browns and greys for now. And then we'll work on a bit of heather. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Just up my knee. I'll show you later. It was a, it was a TikTok that someone we know had done using that, and it really made me laugh because they're using that. That's not my name. A lot of actresses and actors are using it to say they call me 
whatever and just list all of the photographs of their what they did or what they who they know now so Kylie Minogue's done it um <coughs> but yeah it was it really made me chuckle oh I'm really pleased with this Marie that's looking really badgery <laughs> which is what we want isn't it really in a badger class if I said it was starting to look like a parrot, then you'd be a bit worried. Although, I'm actually painting parrots on Friday afternoon. We're doing two yellow and blue macaw parrots on Friday, which is what we did last year on a Thursday class. It was nice to do because they're very vibrant. Right, I'm going to do a bit of heather next. So I want a really dark green so I'll go with a lot of blue a bit of yellow and I think a little bit of black um, really dark um, plants foliage for heather so I'm using a dark this is the greenery I'm using a dark green which is black well, make your green first out of a lot of blue and a little bit of yellow. Although I don't need to fill that foliage in, I'm going to do that a bit darker. Let's go in a bit darker here. Because I'm, I'm in watercolour mode in my head, so if I do a really dark green here like this which, so it's almost black um, that means I can put lighter green on top because we can do that can't we yeah. we can put lighter greens on top so let's go with a slightly darker green that's almost black for the uh, bulk I'm using a little flat brush but printing it like a leaf in places I'm going to fade it out along the edge. And bottom. So there's a new exhibition in the cafe this month. We took down the one the uh, the January one and we've put up the February one a lot of hard work what we do all the time all the incidental stuff that people don't see you know behind the scenes no no it's funny there's a couple that I really like which ones do you really like Which wall? Uh, the mystic wall that's next to the side wall. Yeah, does it look like it could be a climped? Is it underneath the big pink one? No, I do like that one as well. That's my own. What, the big pink it's one? Like this tile and yeah. I like that with uh, colours. Yeah. But then there's one that's got like little flowers and I do see it. It's on the next wall on that. I also like the very miniature embroidery of daisies. On the blue wall. I like the black and white ones on that wall as well. Yeah. There's a few that I like. It's very clever, it's just very niche. I don't know if there's any prices up yet. I can't see it, so I'm just going to pick that. So I'm going to make a, a slightly brighter yellow using, brighter green using more yellow and um, a bit of white. But I don't want my paint to be too. Um, too watery because otherwise I'll lose the effect so I don't want the um, so I'm basically I'm really cheating now because of time I'm using the round brush and I'm using it on its edge so I'm not using that this bit I'm using that bit 
and I'm plopping it on and it gives me the effect of a leaf but you can um, use a round brush to print um, but by having that dark there first saves a lot of time you can't you see you can't do this in watercolor um, you can in acrylics but it's harder because with acrylics you can't get the strength of color and the the fluidity but gouache you can because gouache is wonderful not that acrylics isn't wonderful i love acrylics but i think everything's got its its place and by having a few dark bits i can She's looking lovely, Barry. Thank you. <laughs> Nobody else compliments me, so I might as well. Who's I look lovely? No. Thanks. <laughs> you didn't even think about that then. No. That was very upsetting. <laughs> oh, I, I said, what, so I look lovely straight away. No. <laughs> How rude's that? Didn't even pretend. didn't pretend didn't stop to think what would be the appropriate response to somebody with a very fragile ego oh <laughs> no I don't care I've never really cared because I know not everybody I used to I did used to get upset if people didn't like me for no apparent reason I mean if I'd annoyed somebody then I'd get it but which is usually the case, isn't it? But, but, um, you know, there are people as I've got older that really don't like me. And there's no particular reason for that. And I've learned that not everybody has to like me. No, it's not the law. And that's why I, I really encourage students to try our free classes before they come to anything else. So they, they know what I'm like before yeah. they spend a fortune on lessons. Because I'm... I, I, exactly. <laughs> well, hey, watch it, you. Just because you're going to be off for a month, I'll remember. Um, well, there are some tutors out there, some grown-up tutors, that don't allow any talking or anything. A group I took over teaching... Um, their previous tutor, uh, bear in mind they were nearly all retired people, um, didn't allow discussion or chat or laughing in the class. For three hours this was, and if there wasn't, if there was a bit of laughing going on, she'd, she'd want to know, what's going on, what's what's happening here, you're not here to enjoy yourselves, kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> art really art class. Good, no, well, they, they, felt, they felt really naughty. By having a laugh. Yeah, I bet they did. It took me a long time to break them out of it. That looks alright, doesn't it? It looks really, really nice. But it is just using if I put my brush like that, if if my fingertip there is the surface, I use my brush that way yeah. to print a leaf shape rather than using it flat. Yeah. And and by varying the tones and then a bit of purple on that will look really nice, won't it? I think it looks lovely. Thanks, Marie. You can definitely come again. Jackie, I'm not sure about you. Uh, I said it looked lovely. <laughs> yeah, but I didn't. You said I didn't look lovely. No, I didn't lovely. say that. I said I have not said that you look lovely. <laughs> Trying to dig yourself out of the hole now, Marie. <sighs> you know who your friends are. Work well, with them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, well, so I know. It's because you're just drinking your coffee, you see, and normally that would have happened... 40 minutes ago. <laughs> right, I'm going to let that dry and then I'll make up a nice purpley pink colour. Oh, actually, I ought to do some brown twiggy things as well. I've, I've, I'll need to make up a bit more brown. And that will work quite nicely. It's funny though, um, Marie, you can see this. This stands out quite a lot here. But yeah. look, if I hold it up, it doesn't show up as much, does it, in real life? It's the camera tends to... Yeah, because that's... When you, 
whatever picture you're doing on there, yeah, and even your paint, yeah, look like, more vibrant. Yeah, because the light and everything, mm. it makes it makes it look totally different. I do. I, I, quite alive actually, I, I do enjoy painting animals. I mean, this one, the majority of the owl, I'd done in forty-five minutes. Mm. In the same way, because the feathers are just lots of. What, what What's good about gouache, and and you can see it in this one, is that I put blocks of colour together, yeah. and even though it was dry, I can come back with a damp brush, yeah. and and blend them together. Whereas in acrylics, you can't do that. At all. Right, can you remember how we made that brown? Who are you, Luke? <laughs> how foolish. No. <laughs> it was we made an orange first and then yeah, we added yeah, blue. Yeah. So we'll go with a very red. Red and yellow. Red and yellow, quite a lot of red. Yeah. And then a little bit of the blue. Blue, I just thought it'd be quite nice today not to have burnt sienna in there and you know yeah different colors for a change yeah different colors and um make our own brown put a little white in there and what i'll do with that is i'm just going to do a few of the the sticks that the heather's gonna sit on I had heather in my front garden when I moved in, but it's kind of all died now. Well, I've got two great big clumps of heather. I bought them back from Scotland when yeah, they... Yeah, you need some because the feathers can kind of... Yeah. Them in the garden. <laughs> I, can't, I don't know if you've commented at all, Roger, because I, I think we had issues with your comments last time, didn't they? Because um, they've not come up on the screen. But I hope you've been enjoying... You're enjoying the lesson. I might need a tiny bit more crimson. I put too much yellow out and not enough red. That'll do. Nearly finished my tea, so we'll let that dry. I was just going to quickly look up something for this painting and I can't I can't remember what it was right let me mix some purpley pink so a little bit of blue crimson That's quite a nice heather colour. I think I'll add a little bit more blue. And do lots of dots. Dots on a stick. I might do some slightly more pinky ones on top.
Because again, I've got the same issue in that I want the flowers to be fluid so I can do all my dots, but by doing that, it means that I've not got really strong colour. So what I'll do is I'll do these softer versions, lots of dots, and then let them sink in. And then I will do almost pinky and white tones. So now I need to add a lot more white and a bit more crimson. I won three pounds on the lottery last night, so I'm going to retire. This is the last time any of you are going to hear me um, and I'm going to buy an island. Well, it's a roundabout, but you know, it's the closest, the closest I'm going to get. I think they, I, I, I don't often do the lottery, but when I do, I think they'd let you win a pound just to make you think that you're doing amazingly. So you'll keep buying tickets. Well, the postcode lottery really does do that. You'll not hear, you'll, you're paying 10 Wasn't me. Well, only if they're playing. Yeah, only if they're playing, yeah. But, so, and, and do you know, with the postcode lottery, you don't even have to be, you don't have to live in that street. You don't have to, you can play in the postcode anywhere in the country. So some people will choose a village where there's hardly any houses. Um... So if you win, you don't have to share any of it because probably the, the chances of everybody in that village doing it are very slim. Oh. He's already got a scar on his head, Marie. You're going to make him have a big bandage now. Poor Harry. <laughs> Dobby's eaten, choked on his sock. So that means you're going to get the inferior toy that she doesn't like no, as much. Well. Come 
into the cup of 75 years old and I'm talking to dolls. <laughs> you've got one. Yeah, that's fine. Has it been really cosy in our suite, dear Nope. No. Right, I don't think I can add any more to this. It is half past twelve. I think that's it. I've made some more softer pink heather. I'm really pleased with that. So I will take a photograph of this and put it underneath the reference. Um, beautiful. It does, and you don't normally do animals. No. You normally you normally off ill for the time we do animals. You normally choose your headaches around Animal Week. Oh, well that's, uh, that's very good. But it's in gouache, isn't it? And I think yeah. I think gouache is very very different. Um, so I'll take a photograph of this and post it underneath the um, reference. Well, that, is, that is really beautiful. It looks alive. Thank you. But it was nice doing his eyes first for a change. Um, so next Thursday, you're not here next Thursday, no, do you no, say? I'm not. No, next Thursday, next Wednesday, it's Wednesday today. Next is oh, it's a little sparrow on a mossy twig, mm. and then there's a banana. Yeah, I know. Um, this afternoon's drawing class is a woman walking into a scene uh, of a desolate field. Tomorrow morning is charcoal, and we're doing a figure and uh, face. Thursday afternoon's watercolor is um, evening hay bales. Friday afternoon's watercolour is yellow and blue macaw parrots. Saturday is our free demo and it's layers of misty trees in watercolour at 11 o'clock on the shops page. Monday morning live from Waddington is an old mossy tree in acrylics. Monday evening's watercolour class is buildings with a river and a gondola. Definitely not Venice. I think it's Cambridge. Slightly different. Um, Tuesday afternoon's acrylic class is an evening on the lake at Star Head. Wednesday morning's gouache class is your little sparrow on a mossy twig. So thank you very much for your company. I hope you've enjoyed yourselves. And I look forward to seeing what you've created um, when you get around to finishing it. But do spend time. The more layers you can build up, the better. Look, if I zoom in, you can see how dodgy mine is. Oh, actually, it's not. It's amazing. But, you know, I'm trying to be humble. There we go. So thanks ever so much, everyone. Have a really good week ahead, whatever you're up to. Please look after yourselves and stay safe. Um, and see you soon. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye.